what is this army? He's got a single healer. He brought a clone. He's got skeletons and bats, not for a skelly donut. Super barbarians. And he'll pair all that with Lalo. The Golden Heart Cup is back for another season. And we have a key matchup here in the group stages between Navi and Chaz Mac Gaming. So ladies and gentlemen, let's dive right in. Let's dive into our debut of the Golden Heart Cup and see if Chaz Mac can take down Navi today. It is going to be a Skelly Donut into Lalo to kick us off today. He's going to be diving in with a couple of Skelly Spells to take out the Monolith and the CC. Very, very common approach here. Usually this is paired with a blimp on this style of base here to like bomb out the multi inferno to set pathing into the town hall. But he doesn't seem to have thrown that into his attack. So he's actually gonna be pushing in with a log launcher and going for the kill squad and going opposite of the town hall. Definitely out of the ordinary for what we would typically see for a skelly donut on this style of base. And always with the skelly donut, one of the key things that we're looking for is to try to set pathing and to set the pathing that just sounds like just an arbitrary blank statement but what that actually means is we've created a hole in the middle of the base there we need to have the heroes take out all the defenses from the edge of the base there to that hole that is created that's how you create the pathing because what is left after that is a crescent shape where there's not two different paths around the hole that was created in the core of the base. So the Log Launcher doing a fantastic job of running down the multi -inferno. The Queen was able to pick up the scatter shot, and now you can see that there are no defenses from the edge of the base there all the way to where that hole was punched out. And now the Bloons, as they path around, will have three anchor points for air defenses. Maybe one of them will get removed at the very end of the path nearby the Phoenix there. Doesn't quite get it, but that's fine. But the Hounds are going to be taking the exact same path as the Bloons, and the Bloons have a straight line path through the base here. Very, very, very sound with the fundamentals here, but this base is still going to be a nightmare to move through this Town Hall area because of the split between the Rage Tower and the Town Hall Inferno combination there. Rather, the Town Hall was four tiles away from the Inferno, so you can't freeze them together. Just lose a pretty... Decent chunk of troops right there. Blues are still moving though. Get the defensive uh, queen. He has his war champion to go over there and pick up the slack there. Head under to support. Able to get that down. RC ability goes off there and it hits the multi deep into the core of the base there. But the balloons are going to get melted into it. That's the war champion. You can hurry up and get there and get the stun. But she's on a path to it right now. And don't get distracted there. Don't get distracted. Diggy gets the stun. Gets turned around there with the war champion. But he does get through that multi and he's still moving. And it would be nice if you would actually support the world champion here, but it's already a couple balloons in the backside of the base there and try to provide a little bit of shielding for the world champion. He even throws down the haste. She'll power her way through, not only boosting her speed, but also boosting the speed of the diggy. Get the stuns, get more stuns, and get more triples. It is a triple right here. Chaz Mac Gaming will start off this war with a very, very nice Skelly Donut into Lala. An unorthodox approach here. Powers through the extremely dangerous area around the town hall, and with one second to spare, Deeper gets it done for Chazmat Gaming. Navi Gaku. Start in with a little bit of lightning, tagging out the sweeper that was facing down on the base. I think. Yeah, <laughs> it was a sweeper. I had to think about it for a minute there. I was like, it looks like it's a symmetrical base here. One side has a battle builder, but there's no hidden little hidey hole there for the builders to crawl under. And so you can see the difference in the wreckage there from a sweeper compared to a battle builder. So yeah, he was zapping out the sweeper. He deployed the queen to get the air defense off of the bottom of the base there. Then recalled her out of there, redeploys her to the other side of the base there, shows up in. We'll get that air defense down, and she will now get topped off by her unicorn as the king provides some tanking. See the queen going to get the scatter shot out of the way. The king can just control the expo with the scatter shot as he phase along the outside of the base. That'd be fantastic. But it does need to sail this blimp across the base and secure the town takedown. Very, very dense core here. Lots of value here for super dragons, and a very, very tight funnel keeps them all together. The blimp will sail across. He will need to rage it and to kind of put all of his eggs in one basket right here. Needs to secure the town hall with this blip. If it does not take the town hall, he's in a world of hurt. It's struggling to get into it. He does step into it now, and town hall goes down. And that should seal the deal here. He got the defensive queen off at the bottom of the base there. The super dragon is still alive. 
Queen is still moving. RC has not been deployed. What? <laughs> All right, you know what? If he didn't get the town hall down on the initial part of the attack there with that blimp, I suppose the world champion could have gone in there as a backup to go secure it. So I think one way or another, Gaku was gonna get this, even if the town hall didn't go down. But it's a, it's a lot better if it just does, right? It's a lot better if it just does. That is basically a swag bro champ. I don't think he actually needed her. And on top of that, he's got a minute to spare. War is tied. Mech finds the Tesla farm immediately upon deployment of his queen. But it was off to the side a little bit there, so we can engage it a little bit of a, at a time here. Hours through the defensive king. And how much Tesla farm is that? I see... More Tesla popping now, so it is developing it into a little bit more he's gonna have to handle. Steve Goblin deploys over the left side of the king, and the king will work towards the queen, but the king and the queen are gonna cut each other off here. And the queen would hopefully take the turn in. The grass guys will tie both of them up for just a moment. The king will pop his ability, and the queen does take the turn back. Battle drill on his way in. I would assume this is going to be a battle drill. That is carrying a Yeti bomb. If you get the defensive queen to jump. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Battle drill. Drops out Yetis. Okay, that's what I thought. Yetis will throw the Yeti mice there. Take out the multi inferno. The queen, what is this queen doing? Queen. Okay, mech. Luckily, the queen is going to turn back towards the town hall here in a moment. I hope. I, I really hope because otherwise he's in a lot of trouble here. Let's take a lot of damage while he's stuck fighting the Lava Hound. Eagle Artillery is activated and is it targeting the Queen or is it targeting our healers? Target the Queen. Another freeze invested in the Town Hall takedown and visibility as well. Oh, rip back. He's put in everything trying to keep the Queen or healers alive. He finally gets in, takes the Town Hall down, and I don't know how many healers he has left there, but this Queen charge is greatly crippled here. And now he's gonna be struggling to push his way to the core of the base there, past the Town Hall Poison and into the Monitor Tornado Trap, Giant Bombs. Queen is gone! And that means the chances for this triple are probably going with her. There goes this World Champion. He'll try to gather whatever, whatever kind of percentage he can here, but guys, this one is struggling to say the least. No, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Maybe he still can't pull this up. He's gonna get into the scatter shot. With a couple of balloons there leading the pack, the rest of it goes into the multi, and he does take it. Hold up! Wait a second! I maybe tried to call it a little bit too soon, but no, no, no. I did, I did call it right. I did call it right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Definitely needed the queen to clear these targets on the inside of the base, and then if he had just a couple of those breezes that he had to burn in the town hall to assist into the scatter shot, and the queen was able to handle the monolith. This hands down would have been a triple. So, Queen throws. And it gives Navi an opportunity to get in the lead. Wario will go in for Navi's second attack. And it does look like he's taking the long approach across the base here. The box base. So, it is normal to approach it exactly like this. But he'll go ahead and jump into the multi front of the bottom of the base there. The Warden. Please cooperate, Warden. Wandered a little bit north there. Look at the mortar. But I think he would have preferred to have the storage and wizard tower here. Bump this place down well in advance there. Rage up the warden walk. And he'll get that wizard tower down. Locks onto the Roar Champion. Not a bad pick up there, but time is a very valuable resource in these attacks. So a bit of time spent taking her down is less time that he'll have for the next phase. Does give some nice access, but he pulls out there before he goes into the scatter shot. And the scatter shot is not worth the time to go after. Like, obviously, the scatter shot is an extremely high value target, and it would be tempting to continue that warden walk, but he still did get the funnel form. And Electro Titans are going to go to the outside of the base here. The bullers will take some shots over the walls. The queen will reach over the wall and get that bomb tower out of the way. And then everybody's going to go south. And he's got a little bit of a funnel form down there. He'll need to emphasize that funnel with the king of the siege barracks. They deploy now. The ward ability goes off here. So he engages the raised tower area. The no ward ability to get deeper in the base there. But he'll have a lot more troops to arrive into it. That will survive through this high damage area if he just pops the ward ability now. He does have a bunch of balloons. Out in front of the healers here. 
not only dishing out damage, but also soaking up all the traps there. In fact, most of the traps went off while he was still under ward ability, so he's got even longer push with them. They just keep on getting more and more value here with the Super Bullers. The Super Bullers stay enraged the majority of the way to the base there. Another second jumps to get into the back side of the base, and now the Roar Champion will go and get the scatter shot off of the left side. Queen, because of his jump positioning, is uh, hopefully going to go to Town Hall. Oh, uh, that's uh, not good. That's not good. The jump gave too many options. This is a problem, to say the least. I don't know if he gets the tunnel down. But if he doesn't get the king to take the turn into the base right now, there's no chance. King does turn in. Go, King, go. What if he had that invisibility right there that he used on the queen? He doesn't have, obviously, here 10 seconds to try to take it. He's got the Lecture Tie, and the king is. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you know what? That's a one star. So it is a very, very, very good thing that they got the defense right before it. It is percentage advantage into Navi's favor, but Chasmak unexpectedly takes the lead. Did anybody have on their Clash Bingo card that Mario is gonna one star? I didn't, I definitely did not. This is very, very out of the ordinary. And honestly, it was largely to do with the way that he placed that jump. If the jump was used to direct the troops directly at the town hall and didn't give them an option to veer off to the side, he potentially would have been fine. Still, the scatter shot on the right side would have been a problem, but you don't want to take that risk. You want to make sure the town hall is going to have direct access and it's going to go down. That can happen to anybody. They happen to Morio. Fantastic. Now respawn. We'll see if he can sustain the lead here for his team. Remember that if Navi triples and this misses, and Navi holding a percentage advantage at the time would ultimately put them into the lead. So Chazmek can't back off in the slightest here. But they also, as they play what, three matches in the group stages here, they have to play other te every other team in the group. Navi's got a pretty tough group. Well, I guess you could say Navi and Chazmek have a pretty tough group. A lot of very, very good teams in the group, and they need to win. Basically, two out of three wars would give them a really solid chance of making it through into the playoffs. But you need to be in the top two of your group. We could ultimately see both of these teams make it through. We can look back at the groups here and see the other teams that are in the group in just a moment. But let's see how far Tim Tastic's queen can go there. I like I like the sneaky goblins going to town hall. Be able to clear the traps up there. Was able to clear the collectors on the top side of the town hall. The War Champion goes invisible. One more invisibility, so we can't use the next one onto the War Champion to keep on pushing her through. We'll go ahead and throw down all the Sneaky Goblins up the town hall and. Giant Bomb! Oh, oh no! This is not good! Alright, well! <laughs> drama, drama, drama! He tested for traps not once, but twice! And he still found a Giant Bomb! on the main deployment of the Sneaky Goblin, so he has to use the ward ability to get through the town hall. And guys, that might be Navi's ticket in the lead here. But he will secure that town hall takedown at the cost of his ward ability. He's got two freezes. He needs to make his way through the defensive world champion, Tesla's, and the multi-inferno. The end of his path here. No hero support other than the warden. Obviously, the warden can do a lot to assist, but he needs Blues to be alive to direct his target to the defenses that he needs to get down. And this multi melting through these Blues here and leave him very little to handle these last couple of defenses. But the warden's still alive. He still has Logic Owl. Got a lot of minions and pups here swarming. Red Air Bombs claims a lot of those, so that was short lived. Maybe the warden can still pull through. He's chipping away the right side. Balloon. Not able to last very long. He's shifting way down south. Electric Owl providing the tanking there. Gets him through the air defense. Warden takes one strike. Eight seconds. Guys, he's not going to have the time. The Warden very likely could overpower this Archer Tower, but he'll never have the opportunity to do it. Timtastic. <laughs> it was a really good attack. It was a really, really good attack. Very, very unlucky. 
and we'll see if Navi can take advantage of it. Normally, Stars waits until the very end of the war, but Navi needs his support now. Time to rally the team. Going for what looks like a super minion bomb into twin hog attack. Do one of his favorites. I assume the drop will be on top of one of these bomb towers. They go ahead and make the hound start its way towards the air defense. And then turn around with that invisibility to redirect it so we get the path directly the same way that the super minion bomb needs to drop to protect the blimp. But he does catch the tornado trap. Does uh, lock out of the town hall now. Needs to keep these super minions invisible to get these expos out of the way here so we can use them as a funneling point. But he's able to claim his primary targets there and gets the expos down. Get this race tower out of the way. A bomb tower would be helpful, but he doesn't get the bomb tower. So, Athena is in 100% set. I like that he picked up a couple extra Tezzas out of it, so potentially okay. Being taken a little bit of damage there from the Archer Tower, but she is deployed into just enough damage that he can heal back through it. This Rage Tower trigger up top. What was he doing up there? Oh, what was that? I mean, whatever it was, it took out multiple defenses up there. Maybe it's a couple of balloons. It took out an Archer Tower and a can at the top of the base there. And got the Rage Tower to trigger. Which, obviously, if you can pre-trigger the Rage Tower, that is huge, huge impact here. But the Queen is going the wrong direction. Okay, Queen! She just wanted to pick up a Bomb Tower, take some heat off the Hogs for the later of the attack. But she does go back. She picks that scatter shot up. And she'll keep on moving for a little bit longer. And at the rate she's going, at the path she's taken, she could end up having... The hog slip in and get the tanking for the scatter shot. But here comes the CC. Very, very favorable CC right here. It is rocket balloons. It is super minions. Poison up the super minions. The world champion is going to quickly deal with rocket balloons. And he does end up losing his queen to the model. But that might be okay here. Our champion just needs to stay safe. Plenty of hogs providing plenty of cover for her. Keeping her completely damage free. Plenty of health. Ability attack. Freeze up the scatter shot. Got the defensive row champion out of the right side of the base here. Stars is looking good, guys. Stars is looking really good here. But he still needs to make his way past this defensive king. But there's so many hogs and super hogs here. Honestly, at this point, just let some of the hogs go down. Let some of the super hogs go down. Toss the right is in a cleanup. And keep on pushing through. RC ability can go up here or he can swag it. It's crushed. And Navi, just like that are back in this war. Stars are tied up. Navi has presented an advantage, but it still remains very close. 14 buildings in the deficit. Tazmac Gaming will send in Wolf Shears. He's got a recall, Queen Charge, and Electric Dragons. We're gonna start up at the left side of the base here. Just gonna go in and pick up the air defense. She stays to the north after she picks it up. She could reach in there and get the defensive queen out of the way, which would definitely be worth grabbing. And especially since he's going to have to invest one rage into it if he wants to go there. I think queen's going to go that way, though. Three calls out. Maybe he recognizes that the queen wasn't going to go that way. Doesn't want to risk it. But you can see that he formed a funnel down here for the queen. So obviously, this side of the base there, he wants the Queen to go off and go to the Royal Champion. Deploys the last healer. Remember when you deploy the Queen with the Unicorn, you can only recall out four healers with her, so we've got to delay one. But if he doesn't get the defensive Queen with his Queen Walk, then he'll need to take her with the Electro Dragons. Although I guess the King could go in there and deal with him. Or deal with her. But he definitely does not want his world champion to have to go through any area of the base there that has any standing defensive heroes. He's up the monolith. Half the town of poison. Queens pulls the defensive lava hound. Nice that the e could have got a couple more chains to take out the CC before the queen pulled it, but off her ability. Down. Alright, e drags dying out now. Warden will keep on chipping away for a little bit longer there. Does he have the Phoenix? Yes, he does. The king will deploy over the right side of the base here. To handle that defensive queen up top, so that's going to be the biggest prop for the back side of the base. So he's going to have to find a way to deal with. I like that the Phoenix is hanging out and finish off that multi inferno. That's huge right there because that saves the healers. Clutch Phoenix right there. Very, very, very important that that happened. But the World Champion will 
move in from the outside of the base there. Battle drill worked with War Champion. You to see that he didn't use a Siege Machine all the way until now. So between the Diggy and the Battle Drill, he's got two different stuns going out here. And the defense is thinned down to a line. Queen Charge still moving. One freeze on standby. Lots of damage picking up here with the Expo. He's got a chance to pull through here. He's got time to work with. He really needs that Road Champion to survive. He'll freeze up and preserve his Road Champion. A little bit longer. While the Rage Tower is active, that's a good time to use it. Battle Drill stuns up the Expo. Battle Drill is taking the damage right here. The Battle Drill will drop out troops and assist with the Queen takedown here, which is huge. Electro Titan and Yeti pop out. Queen still moving. And the Queen is putting outside of the base, though, and help with the cleanup. He needs to get through with this Road Champion as well. He needs to get this multi down. It would have been nice if the Road Champion could have handled the multi or if he could have got the Electro Dragon to take it, but he's down to the last few seconds, and that timer is counting out. He's not going to make it. He doesn't have the time. His cleanup dies out on the outside of the base there. Queen's on her own, and she won't even survive until the end. A 96% here. Very nice attempt from Wolf Shears. Needed another chain or two out of the Z-Drags, and it would have been a different story. But Klaus gets the hold. Klaus will return fire. What does he have? Oh, man. What? <laughs> Klaus! Klaus, what is this army? He's got a single healer. He brought a clone. He's got skeletons and bats, not for a skelly donut. Super barbarians. And he'll pair all that with a Lalo. <laughs> Klaus, you never fail to disappoint. Wait, that's not the right words. You you always you always surprise us. That's 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 more correct. <laughs> never fail. You never fail to. I said all the wrong words there. <laughs> okay, let's not focus on me saying all the wrong words. Let's focus on Klaus bombing out the town hall with this blimp clone to assist right there. Takes out the multi inferno and the expo will go down as well. CC is pulled. Like he used the warden to assist there to... Wait a second. I thought he had the queen deployed down there. No, it was the warden. The warden... I am very confused. What did we just see? What the heck was that? Oh, how did he get the bottom compartment cleared out there? Oh, he just put a bunch of balloons in with it. What? All right, well, ground warden. Yeah, ground warden on top of that. All right. <laughs> interesting, Klaus. Interesting. I'm trying to process what he just did there. Because I thought he had the queen deployed, but now the queen deploys at the bottom base here. Single healer queen charge here. Single healer plus, I guess, the unicorn as well. And that, I guess, would have to be perfectly calculated. But he still probably should put a Coco Loon down. As he dives in the multi for another queen. I mean, you, got, you gotta love it. You gotta hand it to these guys. They calculate out exactly how much healing they need. Don't overcommit. And one healer seems to be all Klaus needs as his start was very interesting in this attack here, but as he continues to make his way forward, it's getting more interesting as we go. He goes ahead and pops that queen ability, takes out the defensive world champion, tags out the multi inferno, and then the queen will go down to the monolith. The world champion gets the help of the skeleton spell. He's gonna use a couple of hounds to just surround the backside of the base there. The world champion to tag out that scatter shot. Skeleton, or excuse me, the bat spell, I mean, is going to assist at the defensive grand ward in the air defense to provide some additional support in the area. Haze will carry him forward. Wounds are just swarming in every different section of the base there, getting every perimeter defense, and they're all Klaus in the corner of the base there, all together! Klaus with two freezes and Haze still on standby doesn't need him. Holy, holy, Klaus, that was. That was exactly what we expected out of Klaus. He never disappoints. That's what I was trying to say at the start of the attack there. I was trying to say Klaus never disappoints. He's always insane. He gets the defenses down, throws his last blue over the right side of the base there, picks up the straggling little bit of trash, and then hastes his way in to close it out. It's a triple for Navi. They have percentage advantage. And now, as we go to the final exchange there, they're a star up. Chasmac will need a triple and General Lex, and I guess Kazuma will be the final closers. Here we go. No delay. General Lex is in. It's a Hogs. This one looks like a Skelly Donut. Queen will deploy in from the 
right? Hey, is this a skelly donut? I would expect to try to save time. Why would he not do the skelly donut in advance? Why is he pushing the queen? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Chip that invisibility. Okay, okay, he can recover this, he can recover this. Battle builders onto the monolith. Visible again. Oh, oh no! General Axe is throwing! Gets the monolith down, but leaves the CC standing! Oh, this is bad. This is bad. He still will have the punch to secure the town hall takedown with his queen. I think. As long as the CC doesn't come out and cause any problems. As long as ground skillers don't pop and cause any problems. The queen needs some support there. She gets a freeze. Holding that lava hound back. Hold it at bay there. Goes invisible with his queen, making the lava hound invisible as well. The queen will step up. She'll pop her ability. She will take that town hall. What are you doing? Turn and take a strike. Turn and take a strike. Turn and take a strike. No! Rip the dream. That is problems cascading off of the Miss Skelly Donut. Slightly off of the invisibility. And it cost him the town hall takedown. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not a good sign here for Chazmat Gaming. This is a rough, rough way for them to be... At this point of the war here, especially after they had the one star on defense, they picked up that one star. They stopped Morio to a one star, which is crazy in its own right. But he'll keep on pushing. He's not going to give up. He does take the town hall down with a couple of hogs that went off in the area. The king's working on the outside of the base there. He's got a super dragon that came out of his flame flinger that'll work into the very back end of the base there. Pops his RC ability. Get to the defensive queen. Got the scatter shot down, but his war champion gets targeted, and she gets wrecked. All right. We saw a one star, one star in this war. What do we think are the chances that Navi would one star twice in one war? Slim. Very, very slim. But never zero. And it'll close at an 88%. All right, Kazuma. Don't throw. Just don't throw. You know that he probably didn't have enough time to change his plan, but maybe he could make some adjustments. Maybe he could go in for a safe two-star, but... Okay. Guys. <laughs> He's not. He's not. Kazuma had every opportunity to change up the plan and go for something safe. He's going to risk this war on a dragon attack with a Hail Mary across the base here with a blimp. And if it runs into traps, if this blimp gets stopped, this could be the one star that Chazback needs. Guys, it all comes down to this blimp. If this blimp arrives and takes the town hall, then Navi wins. If it misses, then it will swing the war. Super minions pop out. Red air bombs going off here. Super minions lock on the town hall and quick and easy. It's over. No traps to stop it. Timtastic not able to get the stop here on Kazuma and he'll keep on moving, but we'll see if he can get the three star now. Quick and easy right there. Quick and easy. <laughs> I suppose maybe the heroes could have reached the town hall, but it was pretty embedded in the base right there with all of this top quarter there potentially would throw off the pathing. So he was really banking pretty heavy on that blimp arriving. And so that was a bit of a risk. It was a very, very big risk right there, but it could have gone with something that would secure the town hall a little bit safer, but he just decided not to. So, you know, I I, I respect that. I respect the, the risk taken there. Makes it a little bit more exciting, but he still has a chance to triple this because he got the value out of the super dra or out of the dragons and he got the value out of those super minions. So with the race tower active, he'll charge his way forward there. The King of Pop is ability. He's got the dragons and the warden still working on the left side of the base there. They've gone way further than I would have expected them to go, but because he got that super minion value, obviously they're gonna be well supported here to the backside, and with the heroes moving in, head hunters come down, freeze up the multi inferno, lock on the defensive king there with the head hunters. He's got more freezes, he's got invisibility. He'll go ahead and make the dragons invisible, along with the warden over the other side of the base there, soaking up all the traps with that dragon. And the warden will keep on chipping away for just another strike. Our seal popper ability, and this one is in the bag. Kazuma was not gonna let us down one way or another, he wasn't preparing himself for the anything other than triple. 
He was going for a triple. He was prepared for a triple. He got a triple. And he gets the win. Navi will take this war. 13 to 11. Even after a one star. Which is insane. Like, <laughs> imagine having a one star in your war. And you still rack in 13 stars. Mad impressive.